Oh, so that's cool, cool. Yeah. Um, so are you in America at the moment? Yeah. Cool. Oh, nice. Nice and sunny. Because yeah. I'm, I'm in Peckham, so it's not quite as... But it's actually quite sunny today. Too. Yeah, I used to live in Peckham. Oh, did you? Whereabouts? Um, Ivanhoe Road. So are, you near Bellingham. are you serious? <laughs> no, don't tell me you're on Ivanhoe Road. I, literally, I live on Ivanhoe Road. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Well, there we go. Ivanhoe Crew. This is cool. Ivanhoe Crew. There's actually was... a Facebook page for it as well, like the yeah. Ivanhoe oh, yeah. <laughs> Red Association. Um, I'm going to begin, um, obviously we'll talk mostly about sort of Halo because it's the, the big show that's at the moment and a huge sort of role for you. So I'm just going to begin by asking if you could just, because obviously it's a big series of lots of people and <laughs> involved in it. So how, yeah. how does your character fit into this, into this world for people who are coming into Halo a little bit kind of blind, I suppose? <laughs> I play a Spartan super soldier. I'm part of the most elite military force um, that humans have got at this point um, in the future um, and and I'm part of Master Chief so Master Chief is the lead character he is the main guy and he's a the, you know the main um, soldier that you play as in the game it's as a first person shooter game um, and I'm part of his team we're in a, a fire team of four soldiers and um, there's me Riz 028 there's Kai Vanak um, and Master Chief and we will work together. We will have our own specialities and basically our missions usually involve aliens, um, but in the beginning involved human insurrectionists. Um, and I think, you know, you'll kind of get to see some of that play out in the storyline. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's kind of interesting, but yeah, I'm part of the ensemble cast is quite large um, and there's all different types of characters and different storylines. Yeah, the main reason I ask you to, 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 to spell it out for people who haven't played it is because I never played Halo somehow. I don't quite know how I managed to avoid playing it. So it's just good to hear someone sort of explain it all to me. But no, I've I've seen the first the first couple of episodes, and I think it is. Oh, have you? Yeah, you've yeah. watched it, yeah. Really, really. No, it's, it's great because for somebody who doesn't, hasn't played the game, it's really it just sort of throws you into the world, but it doesn't make it, it makes it easy, very accessible uh, for, for people like me. Um, but did you <laughs> did you play the game? Did you or did, had you played it anyway? And if not, in preparation for this, did you feel feel you needed to or was it not necessarily necessary to your sort of um yeah to your preparation for the park yeah growing up I wasn't a massive oh was I a gamer I mean when I was a kid a teenager I did have like a, a chipped playstation you know Sega Mega Drive and all that kind of stuff um but it didn't kind of I didn't graduate into into sort of like late teens playing computer games I'd heard of Halo um I had friends and like family members and stuff that had played it before so I was aware of the IP um, and then when I got the role, that's when I was like, ah, right, okay, I've, I've got to do a deep dive here. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I went and bought an Xbox. Um, I bought some of the games, started playing. I bought a couple of the graphic novels, read those, smashed through those. They were incredible. Um, and then just did loads of research. I, I did actually watch some sort of like fan videos on YouTube and stuff like that, that where they kind of posited some interesting I don't know, I guess, yeah, like topics that weren't, I mean, one of them was talking about like, can Spartans reproduce? So I was like, oh, yeah, let's, let's see what they got to say. <laughs> um, so I kind of went, yeah, deep on that kind of stuff and the Halo Wikipedia, looking at the Spartan program. Yeah, it was really important. I needed to understand the games for sure, yeah. Yeah, because I, I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I know I'm sort of weird in the minority of people that didn't necessarily play it because it was a huge deal, Halo. I remember when it sort of came out. I remember going to like Blockbuster at the time and it was everywhere, <laughs> kind of Halo posters and stuff. So does that does that add an extra pressure when you take on a role that you know means so much to so many? Or do you just have to kind of block all of that out when you're in a in a project like this? Um, no, I'm one of those people that takes it on. So I'm like, I, I can't just ignore the pressure. Yeah, I definitely feel it. And I and it was similar with The Witcher, actually, with Terubial. Um, it shows she's this um, elf in the books. Um, that was in the first series of The Witcher. And that was is still, you know, a similar beloved um, IP and, and source material. Those books are incredible and sold millions worldwide. So I kind of got a, a taste of that with The Witcher. And then it was even more with Halo as well, because obviously it's a bigger role. And yeah, it was nerve wracking, mm. really nerve wracking. Yeah. Have you got to experience it? And because obviously you get this kind of fanfare and I know you get, you know, it's a comic cons and things like that is where you get these kind of big um, 
collection of cosplayers and stuff and these kind of panel discussions have you had the chance yet to be privy to that world at all through through halo is that still to come i think that's still to come although we did have our premiere a couple of nights ago um and we had some cosplayers there that were on the red carpet they looked amazing and we were laughing because I, I was asking them about how their helmet went on and off and we were talking about how uncomfortable um the spartan armor is <laughs> <laughs> whether you're a cosplayer or I mean, we're essentially cosplaying, I suppose, ourselves in a way. Um, and it, yeah, the costume is just mm. hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot. Because <laughs> being like a kid, you know, when you sort of think about wanting to get into a career in acting, you know, it's sort of it's something yeah. about there's a childlike quality to it. You know, you kind of run it, even when we're all young, we're standing behind doors pretending we're James Bond like this and stuff like yeah. that. You know, so I just, you know, but but now you're is it this being in something like this bring out that kind of innate childlike quality because you're running around in costumes with these kind of weapons, this kind of mad <laughs> world. Does it almost make you feel like is it like the pure form of why you were attracted to acting? If that makes sense? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's it's just play, isn't it? That's what acting is, and that's that's what actually a lot of like actors' books and seminars and classes. That's what they all tell you. It's just play hmm. and to let go, be free, and that's what children are like, right? They're free. They just yeah, they're they're they have no any kind of boundaries you know they're, they're, they're just happy to give anything a go and you've just got to submit yourself to it otherwise and I think especially with something like sci-fi and fantasy you have to submit you have to commit because if you don't it actually will then not look accurate or, or it won't look authentic if, if an actor looks a bit like oh I don't quite believe what I'm you know even if you are just looking at a, a dot or a stone pretending it's a big old monster or whatever you have, you have to really just um, throw yourself into it. Yeah. But I mean, obviously it's not, obviously it is, a lot of it is like play, but it sounds like there was a lot of training for this as well. Lots of hard work. Oh, yeah. But is that, do you kind of find that it was it quite a fun way to pick up new skills? I, I remember I interviewed an actor about three years ago and he said that he could, he's now equipped at riding a horse with a sword. And that's not something regular people just, the skill people pick up. I couldn't just go on horseback and be able to like hold a big sword like that. But as an actor, you get to experience all these like weird kind of, strange perks I suppose and pick up these new skills so even though it was quite hard I imagine the training was it quite fun to learn stuff that you might yeah. otherwise have had the chance to learn yeah and it kind of fits in with my way of life because I'm, I'm really bad for um signing up to loads of new courses and classes and hobbies and stuff and then and then I'll quit quite quickly and then I'll be like right yeah that's it I can play the saxophone just because I had 10 lessons or whatever and then I get bored but so acting kind of panders to that a little bit for me because it's like yeah why don't you learn this for six months and then and then do something else for another six months I'm like yeah it's quite fun because you get to just learn loads of different stuff um, and then for Halo specifically the fitness side that has been really a mad journey for me because I wasn't fit before um Halo I hated exercise hated the gym I hated everything about exercise then when I got the phone call to say um you know you're going to be a Spartan are you ready to do it and um, it's going to be really hard I was like yeah 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 cool cool I'll be absolutely fine and then realized oh my god okay and then I just that was it I, I just got immediately got a PT started doing classes then we had our own personal trainer Spartan personal trainer um a couple of months before um, shooting began we started doing sort of like CrossFit and stuff it was and um, the three like me Kate and Bentley all lived in London so we all did it in London our training and and then it was like the military side of training as well we had boot camps learning how to use weapons um how it felt to actually you know shoot a weapon because we don't really do that much in England it's like there's not there's not like gun ranges you can just walk in <laughs> and have to, like yeah. research don't you and you have to like, apply for membership and it's all that kind of, it's not easy so um yeah so there was lots of that feeling recoil on a gun and then how to recreate that maybe if you don't have a, a firing weapon on set um military drills our military advisor dan would like really put us through our bases <laughs> with learning about yeah military tactics and all that kind of stuff um and yeah and then and then it was all the fitness on top of that so we were just training like six days a week mm. from sounds, sounds like my, well, my idea yeah. of hell that does that sounds like <laughs> I, I think right now That's like, just me. I'm, I've I'm got <laughs> I'm now so deeply entrenched now. I've got Stockholm syndrome, and I'm like, I love fitness. So now it's like a big part of my life. I yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I just, I haven't, but yeah, and now I'm like, okay, well, that's my life now. And I, I had to find a way to enjoy it. 
yeah. and I did. <laughs> I think I need to get myself a, a part on Halo season two because I've got a lot of lockdown weight that I need to try and shift. But uh, it sounds a bit like a. Do you, you, mentioned, like, you mentioned the word like boot camp, but like that that must be quite good for camaraderie, like a thing like that. Because I guess you all, because a lot of the times you'll be on like a, a movie set or a TV set and you'll all meet for the first time, maybe at a rehearsal or a read through. But when you've had this kind of time together, working together on something, that must be quite good for like, yeah, sort of helping the friendships form and stuff. So when you do eventually get onto set, I guess there's a lot of established uh, connections already. Yeah, definitely. Especially when we're portraying, you know, like a, a, a team and this and these Spartans as well, you know, it's like they were kidnapped at six, trained, indoctrinated, augmented together. They'd kind of gone through their own boot camp process. And it felt like we were doing our own sort of miniature version of that, I guess, you know, like a halo augmentation. <laughs> Um, and yeah, it does. It, it really does kind of bond you to people, you know, because you go through these this whole adventures together. It must be amazing seeing it all come together. As I imagine with shows like this, so much comes together in post. I mean, I might, that said, I mean, this looks very practical on the whole. It doesn't look too reliant on special effects. But when you've got these kind of big sets and all these characters and so many extras and all that sort of stuff, it, you must be so desperate just to wait to finally see how it's all put together. What was that like for you when you sort of first yeah. saw that, that first episode? Yeah, that was mad. And that was at the premiere, actually. I saw the first episode and um, second. And it was phenomenal. Because also, you know, with such a big ensemble cast, you're only in and on set so many days. You know, there's so many other scenes that are being shot where you're not there. You have no idea what they look like. And so to see it all come together with the music on top that finishes it off perfectly, the tension, the drama. Yeah, it's incredible. It's a kind of it's quite emotional, I guess, because we have invested quite a lot of our time on the show, you know, for the cast, but also the crew, you know, and a lot of people that have been working behind the scenes have been on this for years and years. And mm. you know, just seeing everything come to fruition, I think is yeah, it's beautiful. And was it filmed in Hungary? And if so, did you have any good goulash? Sort of... <laughs> yeah. Have you been to Hungary? Uh, no, I haven't. I've, I've been to Romania for the Cluj, the Transylvania Film Festival, and there was a Hungarian oh. fair where I ate loads of goulash. That's the closest I've got. It's not quite yeah. <laughs> that close, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Budapest is amazing. It's such a great city. You've got to go. Yeah, I really want to go. It's, yeah, it's beautiful, um, but it's also really eclectic. It's got loads of like restaurants, bars, independent ones as well um yeah ate a lot had a lot of unicum did you ever try that at your, yeah, at your that? <laughs> it's like um a very pungent um <laughs> alcoholic drink yeah sold when you are shooting abroad for what i imagine would be quite a, a little while what do you miss most about home when you're away for a while oh yeah um, yeah, because we were on our, oh, that, to be honest, the, the COVID break was the, the heart, like when so we came back for COVID for seven months, and then the production team did an amazing job getting us back, but when we went back, it was like, you know, Hungary was locked down, nothing was open, there was curfews, we couldn't really like fraternise with each other, and that was probably like the hardest time, and that was the time that I was the most homesick probably, um, but yeah, travelling abroad, I don't know, do you want this home that much? It's never really that for that long. So I'm like, bye guys, see you later. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can come and visit me if you want. You bring home. Yeah, I always make sure I've got enough tea bags. Mm. Always Everyone says food. that. It's always tea. It's always, and is that, the same, yeah. is that the same in America as well? Can you get a good cup of tea in where you are now? You actually can, yeah. And yeah, they, they do do English breakfast. That's good. You know, sometimes you go like English breakfast and they're like, eh? But, yeah, no, they do get that. So actually, weirdly enough, this morning, I was looking on Uber Eats trying to get a delivery of this breakfast, but yeah, it's impossible. No. <laughs> My last trip I went away, I went abroad to was Sri Lanka, but that's one place where you can get good tea. That's a guarantee. Yeah. So I was yeah. I've been there. I loved it. I did one of those tea tours, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Is acting something you've just wanted to do for, for a very long time? Is this something when you were really young you decided? Because a lot of people, when they sort of go to school and stuff, they're not quite sure what they want to do. But I always feel when you speak to actors, it always seems to be something that's been inside them ever since they were like four or five years old. It's always yeah. that, that, call it, that, that inclination to perform is something that you usually, I'm not going to say born with, but you sort of, you get you get, a, get a quite a young age. Is that Was that the case for yourself? Yeah, you're right, actually. I listen to loads of like 
um, interview podcasts and a lot of the actors on there was going like, yeah, I, you know, I came out of the womb yeah. <laughs> on the stage. <laughs> you know, like, oh, okay. I guess, yeah, it is similar for me. I, I had, I loved it at GCSE and A level and school. And then I wanted to go to drama school, but this was like 2003, four, and you couldn't get a student loan for it. So I was like, oh, okay, well, that's, that's that then. I, 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 you have to pay it in cash. So then I was like, um, I quite like journalism and writing. So in the end, I went to university, did English, dropped out, went back to uni, did journalism, and then ended up um, being a journalist for a little bit. Mm. And then I'd always had this thing in the back that was like, we've never really like given acting a go, even if just for a hobby. Like I just, but I suppressed it, I think, until I was about 29, 30. Mm. And then I started having acting lessons part-time. Mm. and then one thing led to another <laughs> do, you, do, you remember, um, do you remember that moment when it you were like well that's what I do now because it's, it's not like let's say you want to be like a, a plumber you'll do a plumbing course you'll get your plumbing certificate and then you'll get a job and then you are a plumber whereas with acting you can still do lots of little roles here and there and then someone can say to you what do you do and you're like I'm an actor but I think you know there's that, always that sense of like not quite knowing yet where do you remember what it was was it one role or was there one moment you just went hang on a minute this is actually what I do now this is what this is my <laughs> career <laughs> yeah, it's probably Halo to be honest because I was like right full-time yeah. you're now training to yeah. be a Spartan and that's your full-time job but it is kind of mad yeah that fact that when you're an actor and so many actors feel this as well that you even though you say I'm an actor actually proportionally the amount of time you actually spend on set doing the thing you love or on stage is in terms of a ratio is so small compared to the rest of your time yeah. where you're like at work doing your other jobs you know your, your money pay, bill paying jobs or sleeping seeing friends and family like the amount of times you actually you actually doing acting is so small but that that shouldn't determine whether you're an actor or not like you should be able to just be like yeah, yeah. I'm an actor because all actors feel that all actors don't work all that much. Mm. It's like kind of mad. So I think every actor should just feel a bit like, yeah, I'm an actor, even if I am a florist as well or whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Um, so I've only really got time for one more question because my my editor says if I go over twenty minutes, he kills me because he has to edit my videos. <laughs> so, but <laughs> I mentioned that you obviously studied journalism and stuff. I just wondered, obviously, as someone who's got a um, likes and enjoys writing, have you ever contemplated writing like for TV or film? Is that something? Do you harbour any ambitions to to actually write kind of like you know uh, narrative driven fiction and stuff like that? Yeah, and actually, I was one of those like annoying lockdown action <laughs> writers that was like, hmm, maybe I can write. I think every creative ended up doing that. Um, and I, I haven't written for film and TV before, but I want to, yeah, for sure. But I'm so used to writing factually that, that making the switch is quite hard. Because I think when I started, I've started writing some film and TV, like, you know, sort of small short film scripts and stuff. And I'm still obsessed with like the dates and facts and da da da. Whereas I'm like, no, drama, the dramatic tension. <laughs> but yeah, I want to. I really want to write a period drama, actually. That's my like dream. That's what I've started writing anyway. Oh, nice. Well, it sounds like you took your your things you wanted to do at lockdown and took it seriously because I said I was going to learn French and I was going to learn the piano and I didn't do either. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I started doing Duolingo on lockdown. I got to 100 days. Yeah. And then, and I was like, oh, I can't bother. <laughs> Apparently, I'm 29% fluent in French, but I don't actually think I'm as high as that. So, oh, wow, you're desperate. Where's that? that oh, was just, no, good. no, just, just Duolingo. Yeah. Just it tells oh, you how much this thing you are. But it doesn't really work because all I could, I could just about say my name. So, I don't really think I'm <laughs> excelling on that front. Uh, but anyway, maybe I'd love to go to France and. Yeah, I think living there for like a month would do the trick, maybe. Yeah. I don't know, at least a little bit. Yeah. conversationally <laughs> well maybe one yeah. day i'll interview you again for this period drama that you're you're right who knows <laughs> yeah, yeah brilliant yeah. well thank you so much for your time so, yeah. it's been a real pleasure speaking to you and I, I, I really enjoyed the series and i think yeah. you're you're brilliant in it so i look forward to seeing more of it because i'm sure there'll be more there's more yeah. of it isn't there? this is there going to be more, more? yeah and you'll see more of the spartans as the season progresses um so that's really exciting and more action as well which i don't know when we were watching it at the premiere two nights ago the action was just incredible yeah. we, i've got the, the stunt doubles i have to say were mm. unbelievable they were just so talented and to do that all in the suit was just amazing
Yeah. Yeah, it must and, yeah, there was lots of whoops and cheers in the, in the um, <laughs> when we were watching the premiere. Brilliant. Well, please, this one down well. Well, thank you so much again. And uh, yeah, and we'll, yeah, I'm sure our paths will cross again one day. Sure. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. And, um, yeah, have a nice time in Peckham. Yes, I said much. I never thought Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Yeah.